Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today, guess what? I actually got my connecting cover of Riot. And my comic shop came through and did something really awesome. They got me the Lasher one because uh, they were sold out that day. So they actually got it from another store and they got me the Lasher one. So if you don't know on here, there on uh, YouTube channels, there's a community board, much like uh, you know how you do Facebook updates or, or Twitter updates and stuff like that. So there's a community board. Uh, if you go to my channel and click the you know, the tab that says community, you'll see posts there. And I try to post there as often as I can, a couple times a week to give you updates on if I'm running late on episodes or, you know, health issues or anything like that. Like I usually post them over there, but I will be giving out the Lasher digital code on the community board. So when you see this episode, um, you know, after you're done watching it, I mean, if you're watching it the day it comes out, um, maybe go check the community board and see if that code is still there. Because obviously codes are always first come, first serve. First person put the code in, the code dies after that. So only one person get the free comic. So on the community board, after sometime soon after this video goes up, um, you will see that on the community board. So if you wanna go check it out now, try to get the comic, come back, go do that. That's gonna be the Lasher comic. And for those of you who are here, this is gonna be the Riot comic. There's the code, go to that website, put in that code, and you'll get a free copy of Riot number one from Extreme Carnage. Um, so yeah, and obviously if you're new to this channel, we do give out digital codes to Marvel Comics anytime that they uh, contain them. So if you ever see me do a, a Marvel review of a newer comic, chances are I have the digital code to give out in that episode. So don't miss out. Make sure you ring that notification bell if you want some free comic books. And I think that those codes work worldwide as far as I know. So um. All right, so without further ado, let's dive into Extreme Carnage Riot, written by Alyssa Wong and art by Fran Galan. And I just want to straight up just come out and say I'm not a big fan of the art in this issue. Uh, a couple panels here and there looked okay. Uh, not really my style, this book. Um, I re really didn't. Uh, didn't like some of it. Some of it. Um, some of it, I, like I said, was good. Like the stuff on the bus with Carnage. Uh, that was pretty neat. I like that stuff. Um, and then some of the stuff with Hank being recruited uh, or working with uh, Crane and stuff, I thought that was good. But the Andy, uh, sc you know, Scream or Silence stuff with uh, with Flash and Dr. Steven or whatever, um, I didn't really like any of that stuff. The art was pretty bad on those pages, I feel. Um, like characters' heads would be too big for their bodies and then sometimes they'd be in weird poses where like Andy's sticking her butt out and looking at Flash or Flash is touching Andy on the chin, like, you know, telling her to chin up. But instead of doing something like this, the artist had him do this because maybe it was easier for them to draw the hand open and it just looked bad and, I don't know, it looked a little weird. <laughs> he shouldn't be touching Andy like that. It just came across a little creepy. Um, and maybe that's just my opinion on it, but uh, but yeah. So, I mean, I don't like to personally be touched either. So maybe that's, it could be just projection. I don't know. But anyway, the art, I still feel like from a critiquing standpoint, I felt like the art was weaker on those pages. Um, but in some of the other pages, I thought it was good. So I would say the art, because it was inconsistent like that, is why I wasn't a big fan of it. Because normally I like consistency with art, because even if it's not a style I like, as long as it's consistent, then I can't really call it bad art. This I thought was inconsistent page to page. And for that is why I didn't really like the art too much. Um, and the story in this one, I wasn't big on. I mean, we get to see Hank finally. So that was the guy that Flash, you know, he got uh, Hank a job to work for Crane. Now, I thought Hank was a capable guy. I thought he was just, um, you know, discharged from the military for like PTSD or something like that. But here in this issue, we learn a little bit more about Hank through um, Andy and uh, Flash talking about him. And Andy's like, yeah, isn't that guy a screw up? Like, didn't you say he kind of screwed up over overseas? And that's why he is, you know, got uh, discharged. It wasn't even an honorable discharge. I don't know if she sp goes into those kind of specifics, but she does call him a screw up. And she says, she says, those are your words, Flash. So, uh, so I'm like, wait, so Flash is talking bad about this guy? Then why would he send Hank in? I, I, so now I'm confused on, on that whole Hank thing. Because I was kind of interested in Hank... And a soldier maybe with PTSD going in, having to work beside Carnage, you know, and I don't think he even knows he's working beside Carnage. So Flash is maybe even a bigger D-bag than I thought if he's not even telling this guy that Crane is Carnage. I think he just told him, hey, can you go keep an eye on Crane? And that's all Hank knows. So Hank is surrounded right now by people who are possessed by symbiotes and he has no idea. So like there's this scene here where they're all, all the guards are kind of looking at Hank and he's like, you know, like, man, all eyes on me, huh? Um, and it's because I think he's one of the only people in this group that, you know, well, keeping an eye on Crane and the security detail 
that doesn't have a symbiote on them. So uh, so clearly one or two of these people already have symbiotes. I think Lasher's there and Phage is probably there. Um, I think the dog, like the dog shows up. So Phage is there and Lasher's there. And we still, uh, Scream obviously is now silent. So Scream is gone or dead. And now we have silence. So we still need Agony and, uh, and Riot. So obviously Riot's going to be this book here. And Riot is the person on the bus. So as Andy and Flash are talking about all this and, you know, talking about Hank and how he apparently isn't a very good soldier, which I thought that was weird that they're interjecting that. So now I'm like, oh, so does that mean Hank is going to become Riot? Because remember, I had that theory that maybe he should become a symbiote um, and maybe he won't like Flash and he'll now be an enemy to Flash. Because um, then I was like, well, why would he turn on Flash? Well, if Flash is calling him a screw up behind his back, then I guess that gives him a good reason to hate Flash and kind of makes me not like Flash either uh, too much. So, um, but Flash tells Andy, he's like, I saw what you did to Phage, you, you know, touched his lip and you severed his connection to the void, apparently to where Carnage couldn't talk to him. So Phage had to make his way back to Carnage without any like connection to Carnage, apparently. So he's like, so I need you to go into the void and find Carnage and maybe you can sever Carnage from the void and then we can just go stop Crane and the fight will be over. So it's a good plan, but unfortunately it doesn't work because when, you know, Andy goes into the void, there's no one there. So she's like, I don't understand. I should feel someone, either the other Life Foundation symbiotes or Carnage himself, but there's no one here. The void is completely empty now. I don't know why. So um, so that's curious. I'm kind of uh, curious to see where they go with that. But while all that's happening, Riot is moving through this bus under the possession of Carnage now, and they're trying to find him a perfect host. So he's just going through and killing everybody on the bus. And it's pretty... I gotta say, like I said, the artwork in those panels and that scene is pretty neat and it's horrifying. Um, and so finally they find a perfect host and now Riot is, uh, you know, has a new host and stuff. Uh, and while that's going on, Andy is trying to connect again, like I said, to the uh, to the void and is unable to find everybody and she's starting to get a nosebleed and Flash like, all right, let's stop. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this later. Let's take a walk because, you know, they're sitting in a coffee shop <laughs> talking about this, which I just went over in the uh, Ghost Rider comic. I mean, God dang, the amount of people that sit in coffee shops now, like whatever. I don't know. It's That's another thing. <laughs> that's something, another rant. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, but anyway, so Hank is, is given the mission by Crane because obviously Crane is not sure he trusts uh, Hank. And obviously, I think uh, Crane or Slash Carnage knows that Hank is a plant by Flash. So Crane's kind of messing with Hank a little bit, and he sends Hank. He's like, hey, Hank, go pick up our newest member of our security detail. And he's like, okay. So he goes to pick up Mr. Riot. Uh, so now as Riot gets off the bus and his new host, um, that's where Hank is to meet him. And so, uh, so yeah, so now Hank is, you know, recruit, you know, helping, you know, Crane bring all of his symbiotes to him. Uh, but without knowing it because it, he was sent in with no information. So at this point, if Hank turns and wants to kill Flash Thompson, I, I support that, Hank, because I feel like uh, that's a bad friend move to, uh, one, talk about you like that uh, and about your um, inability to be a good soldier or whatever, and then send them into a place uh, to work for a senator and fudge whatever paperwork or however they, you know, him and Tony Stark got Hank in there but not tell him that he's going to be surrounded by symbiotes and, and killers like Carnage. Like I said, if, if Hank decides to turn against Flash, I feel like it's justified on some level. Um, so uh, so anyway, as Flash has taken Andy out um, of the coffee shop and they're walking down the street, uh, Andy senses someone nearby. And so she reaches out and grabs that someone and it turns out it's a symbiote and it's Toxin. So the book ends with Toxin popping in to talk to Andy and Flash, and we will get the continuation of this story in an issue called Extreme Carnage Toxin, which will come out in uh, two weeks of me as of me recording this, which will be September 8th, 2021. So in about two weeks, we'll get another part of this story. And we have three issues left. So now I have six of these covers to start combining them. And maybe when I get all nine at some point, I'll try to figure out a way to, you know, put them on the wall because I really like that they're doing that as an homage to uh, Bagley and those 90s Spider-Man cards, which were really great. So uh, after I get them all connected, I'll try to find a way to put them together or I'll make a video where I connect them all, you know, so you guys can see it. Or I'll put a community post, probably do a community post, actually, and an Instagram post. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just so this issue is a lot like uh, the Scream issue, I think it was, where I, it was a misstep for me. Like it feels a little bit. 
it's a, it's more setup, and it's weird to have this much setup in an issue when we're when this is part six of a nine part story. So I'm just kind of like move this along, like like you know again more action, um, show more interesting things. Like this was just a lot of people sitting around talking, and I was just talking about that in my the Ghost Rider episode I did when I recorded before this one. Which is, at least in Ghost Rider, they only kept it to like two or two and a half pages. And then they started getting into the story. And then they're like they're visually doing stuff interesting. Like they're going through nightmares and dreams and memories of Johnny Blaze and stuff. So even though it's people talking, they're, they're doing something. Literally in this, it's people, it's, you know, Flash and Andy sitting at a coffee shop talking. And half the, I mean, more than half of the images are of them literally in the coffee shop. And then you get one or two uh, pages or panels or that spread where you see scream uh, or silence trying to connect to the void. And that's it. But it's mostly just seeing reaction facial shots of uh, Andy and uh, and Flash. And it's, it's boring. It's like, I don't understand where these writers, why that's a recurring thing. Like, I mean, it, it's so weird. It's almost like they have a group meeting and say, hey, Let's just have these long, boring conversations of people talking in coffee shops or all this stuff. And that's where, like, um, I get annoyed with writers, modern writers, because a lot of modern writers, they that's what they do. They'll go sit in coffee shops and write their scripts and stories. And there have been that before, too, like, you know, writers that have done that before. Um, but writers like, you know, in the 70s and 80s who did that, they didn't, obviously, uh, go to coffee shops with laptops because they didn't have laptops. Um, so... They, I felt like there was more focus on immersing yourself in the world and going, okay, like, well, where are they going to talk in this scene? All right, we'll have them in a coffee shop for two pages. But then the next issue, they're going to be in the Daily Bugle talking. Or in the next issue, because Peter Parker works there, so it makes sense that we have a scene in there. And the next issue, we're going to do this. And they, they, they limit those conversations between people to specific spots that, that matter and that are different every time. But you pick up a lot of comics nowadays, there's a lot of people talking in comic sh uh, coffee shops and I think it's because a lot of comic book writers are these young millennial hipster people that go out and get coffee and uh, they want to plug like their favorite, you know, place in California or Burbank. They want to mention their favorite coffee shop and all that stuff. And it's like, that's fine, I guess. But when it's starting, when it pops up in multiple books every week, you're like, why are these people having these important conversations in these little coffee shops? Like that, that's so ridiculous to me. Like uh, that's just projection. That's like writers going like, well, I don't want to immerse myself in this world. I want this world to reflect more of my everyday life and my world. And it's like, no, no, no. There's got to be a better balance at that kind of stuff. You know, like, you, like I said, you can have it once or twice, but to do it as consistently I, as I see in modern comics is, is pretty ridiculous. So let me know, how many comic books did you pick up in the last two weeks that feature people talking in coffee shops? I'm, I'm really interested to know. Um, and, and I guess coffee shops slash restaurants. Like, because uh, I see, and when I don't see that, I see people just sitting and talking, like on couches or, and I'm just like, do, do something characters. Like, like uh, you know, I don't, I'm not saying you have to Chris Claremont it and have like Wolverine slashing Sabretooth and have like 40 dialogue bubbles, you know, while he's slashing them. You don't need to go that far. Um, that's too far in the other direction. But there is a there is a media a happy me a medium, I think, for that stuff. And I just don't feel like a lot of modern comic writers find it. And I feel like their editors don't point it out. Their editors are probably like, "Oh, cool, a coffee shop scene. Yeah, I love these scenes." It's like that's what it feels like to me. I mean, and I just feel like if they're all doing it and they're not aware of it, then that is some major lack of awareness. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but yeah, you could probably pick up five or six comic books a week if that's your budget. And I would say probably half of them have coffee shop or restaurant scenes in them. And it's just like, all right, man, pump the brakes a little bit on those. Have them talk in more interesting places um, or have them do like, you know, like physically do things as opposed to just exposition everything. Um, so this one felt like that. It just felt like exposition and set up and set up and set up. And I'm kind of past set up now. I'm, I'm, I, I want to we're six parts in. I want to get to it. And let me know what your thoughts are down below. We'll continue the conversation down there. And we got two weeks until the next issue comes out. So from now on, we'll dive into some Spider-Man stuff. I think I might do another Chillers episode. We'll try to wrap that up. And then some more Ben Riley stuff. And we're gonna be talking about Spider-Man comics too as we do Peter Parker in the black costume. So we'll be doing current stuff like Sinister War and that, so because I want to wrap up the Nick Spencer stuff since we've been talking about that on the channel too. So we'll have a lot of Peter Parker stuff coming up very soon, including the What If book that just ended. I have all five issues, and we will definitely talk about those as well. 
Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.